Hey there, Nick Dunhakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over a script that I recently open sourced called lcurl. And the TLDR around this one is it is going to run curl X number of times in a loop. So we'll get back information like the HTTP status code, how long it took to get a response, a timestamp of the request, as well as the loop count. So for example, if we wanted to hit example.com every 250 milliseconds, five times in a row, then we would get the output that we see here. So in this case, we got five uh, 200s in a row. That's really good. It means the site is up and running. Things are working properly. We can see that each request or we got a, it took this long to get a response and each request was also done at this specific timestamp and we can also see a count of how many times you want to do it. Also, if you omit the number uh, here for the count, then it is just going to run it 999,999 times in a row or until you hit control C. Now, you might be wondering, Nick, why did you make such a script here? Because really, it's not uh, a super complicated thing. Like, technically, you can maybe put this as uh, a one-liner. You might not get all this information back in one line. But yeah, for me, it was uh, getting prepared to roll out a Kubernetes cluster to production. And we don't need to get into the details about Kubernetes, but one of the goals uh, for this work here is to be able to do zero downtime deployments. So for example, imagine that you have a web application running and you're running three copies of it, right? Copy one, two, and three. And now you wanna deploy a new version of your application. In our case, it was very important that when we deploy a new version of our application, there's at least going to be one copy running at all uh, points in time. So with Kubernetes, you can do a thing called like a, a rolling uh, restart or basically being able to do a rolling deploy where if you have version one of your application running and you decide that you're going to be pushing a new version of your application, you can only increment a small amount of your running copies at a time. So you can say, okay, let's take down one of our three copies, upgrade that one to version two, but in the meantime, you have two other copies running version one, and it's gonna make its way through all the copies until eventually you're gonna have all uh, new versions running. And throughout that whole entire process, you know, it would be very nice to be able to respond back with uh, 200s all the way around, right? Basically a zero downtime deploy. And it turns out specifically to Kubernetes running on AWS, if you happen to be using the thing called the AWS load balancer controller, and I don't wanna to get too deep into this one, but um, yeah, you can definitely run into a situation where that load balancer controller thinks that a pod is healthy or basically uh, one copy of replication is running, even though it's like in a terminating state within the Kubernetes cluster, there's like a, a period of time where this can happen. And what ends up happening there is instead of getting a status code 200, you're going to start getting 502s, basically like a backend not found, or you can get a 504, like basically the load balancer is going to say the backend timed out and that would be bad, right? Suddenly we don't have zero downtime deploys. So yeah, I wrote this script so we can uh, hit our site here like, you know, every 100, 200 milliseconds, whatever, just continuously and making sure that when I deploy a new version of the app, then in a couple of minutes, basically that's how long it takes to, you know, pass all health checks and things like that, then we get a 200 all around. And we are. Uh, there's no customer traffic uh, going to the site yet, but it will be soon. But long story short, you know, that's why I wrote the script here, just to get this uh, output here very easily. You know, you can run this on any domain with any delay that you want. And uh, yeah, well, maybe not any delay that you want because we are limited by uh, the speed of Bash here because it is a shell script, technically a Bash script because we're using some features. And uh, yeah, we'll go over maybe the script in a little bit here, but let's just uh, see how it goes on the command line here. So if I run lcurl, uh, example.com here, we can see that we want to do this uh, every second. And, you know, we can say we want to do it 10 times. So this is basically going to count, you know, one, two, three, four, five, or you can hit control C to stop it whenever you want. But we can see here, you know, we're getting status code 200s. Uh, that is how long it took to get a response here, that second column. Then we have the timestamp of the request as well as the count. And if we don't put an account here, let's also just say that we want to do it like every 500 milliseconds with no count, then it's basically, it's going to keep going and going and going until it hits uh, basically almost a million or you hit, con or you hit control C here. Also, when it comes to this output, you know, I tried really hard to give out information that's important. So really like the status code is the most important thing. It's also nice to know the timestamp in case that uh, you want to line up these times to maybe Kubernetes events or some type of logging that you have. So at least you can correlate back to like when you're getting a 502 or 504, you can be like, okay, that, you know, this is happening when this specific event happens. So, you know, you can line up some logs in that way. The count here is like, well, I don't know, not super important. That's kind of where I, why I put it last, but it is good to know that, hey, by the way, like this thing is gonna run like this amount of times, like until you cancel it yourself. And then for something like getting the response time, that's actually built into curl. So I figured it was sort of a nice to have, but 
you know, this script, honestly, if you really shouldn't be using it for doing uh, like benchmarking or profiling of, uh, of a web service here that you, you want to just profile or make sure that you understand like, you know, how many requests can it serve with like various amounts of load because, you know, there are way, 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 way better tools for that. Like WRK work is a really good one for that one. Maybe I'll do a separate video about that one in the future. You know, this one is just really good for monitoring, uh, you know, specific HTTP status codes. So with that said, you know, maybe uh, we can take a look here at the script really quick. It, it is not super complicated, right? 30, 30 lines of code, you know, a pretty decent amount of them are just like the help menu. For example, if I go here and you just run lcurl with no arguments, then it'll just give you some tips on what you might want to do here. Like for example, you have to always at least put in the URL and uh, the time to sleep for, or if you want, there's like the optional third argument here where you can put in the time. But yeah, going back to the code here, you can almost condense this down to like a one-liner alias, but yeah, I don't know. It just feels better to make this a dedicated script here because we get some good information that we want. We have like full control over, um, yeah, some variables that we might want to set, like, you know, how many times is it going to run in a, in a loop? That stuff's going to get a little bit convoluted on one line, but yeah, very uh, simple patterns here. And, and this one happens to be a bash script, not just like, you know, POSIX compliant shell because it is using some bash stuff here, especially for like incrementing the counter. But the idea here, right, is that we have a couple arguments, the URL, the sleep seconds, and then optionally, if we want uh, the loop count, you know, the maximum here, which is gonna default to basically a million. And then we have our counter, which starts at one. And then it's like, well, you know, if we don't have a URL or we don't have a sleep seconds, then, you know, let's uh, throw out a multi-line string here and just give out the help menu here. And in this case, dollar sign zero will be the name of the script. That's why we get this uh, full path here because that's where I have it installed. And we'll go over installing this uh, in a second here in the README. Uh, it, it's like basically just a one-liner that you can copy paste. But yeah, you know, if the arguments aren't correct here, at least not having these two, then, you know, the help menu comes out and then uh, we just exit. And we're actually exiting with one here because, yeah, the, the program was called incorrectly, so it should exit with a status code that isn't zero or an exit code that isn't zero. And then here, you know, logic is fairly simple, right? Let's do a while loop. Uh, and then this is the condition. So the condition is while the counter, this is the variable here, it's going to start at one, is less than the max loop count. So if we put in five times, it's going to do it five times. If it does it uh, less, it does it less. So in this case, we can just be like, okay, 250 or uh, 250 milliseconds, like five times in a row, you know, just like we saw before. And then you can see that it naturally exited on its own. There's no like errors here. In this case, you know, this one was an error because uh, the help menu did an exit one, whereas this one, we can see it's colored white here. Things exited su successfully. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. So, you know, for the now part, like the timestamp, all I do is just run the date command here and uh, percent %f is going to give us year, 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 month, month, day, day. So basically what we see here and that the uh, percent %f there is just a shortcut for that one. And then, uh, yeah, we also have things like now it's time to do the time component of the date or, you know, the time component of the date time where we just have hour, hour, minute, minute, second, second. So that's basically all that. And, you know, if I went here and I just ran the date command with uh, percent %f, I think, what is it, dash D or something? I always forget these flags. Uh, no, just a plus sign. Okay. So if you just do that, yeah, that was just like, you know, month, uh, year, 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 month, month, day, day. So we're just building up um, the output for that. And then we just run curl. Curl is really the, the hero of the story. And we just run it in silent mode that so we don't see, you know, the results back from curl. And then we can do location here, which is going to do any redirects that need to happen. For example, if you went to maybe the HTTP version of the site, uh, if their web server is configured to redirect that to HTTPS, then having location in here will do that redirect for you without having to go explicitly to the HTTPS. TTPS version. So that's pretty common, especially with like, sometimes you have a trailing slash in the URL versus not. So it's nice to have this here. Then for things like uh, the output, we just don't want to see the HTML response. So for example, you know, I, I can start running some of these uh, things manually here. Like for, if you just go to example.com with no flags, then we can see we're getting uh, the HTML response here of example.com. We don't really care about that output in our case. So you can just tell curl that you want the output just to go to dev null. So in this case, we're not going to get uh, anything back, but we do get some output here. And this is uh, that, what was it, silent, I think? Yeah, silent flag. So the silent flag is going to remove that. So you can also use the shorthand flags as well, right? Dash S is short for silent, and this one is uh, short for write out, whatever it was. Yeah, or output, write out's actually coming up next. So I'm going to copy this one, though, because this is uh, going to be a little annoying to type out. But then, uh, you know, the location flag is also here that you can do. That This one is actually, uh, I think it is capital L. So, yep, that is going to work as well. But yeah, the other flag that I just copied before, so that one is going to allow us, and I, yeah, I'm blocking a little bit of this one, but I'll, I'll rerun this one, hold on. 
Uh, there we go. So this is a pretty long one. And, and of course, there's like all sorts of variables in here that uh, don't exist when I'm running that on the command line. So actually, let me get rid of some of this stuff here. And maybe we'll just go with uh, this for now and we'll put that on a new line as well. So with writeout, yeah, there's like certain properties that curl will give us that we have access to, like things like the HTTP code as well as the time total. And then we can also uh, just do a new line as well. So when we do that, we can see we're starting to build up this command already, right? Very simple, uh, similar to the shell script. And then, um, yeah, we're just adding like more stuff because the other stuff exists in, in the script here, right? Like the date time for now, as well as the max loop stuff, you know, that's not available on the command line out of the box. But yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, uh, curl itself is, is a very, very, very solid tool. So I'm really happy that it gives us access to uh, these variables like this. And, you know, if you were to Google for, uh, well, I don't want to Google now, but you can Google this one on your, on your own. You can just Google for like curl write out values or parameters or variables, and you'll get a list of what you can do here. So, you know, time total is a useful one if you want to see how long it took to get a response and, you know, HTTP code does uh, the HTTP code. But yeah, that's basically it for the script. Not super, super duper involved. And uh, if you want to install it, you can go to the readme file here and installation is uh, super simple, right? There's really no dependencies other than curl. So I'm pretty sure you probably have that installed. If not, you can either, you know, app install it, brew install it, pacman or yum or whatever package manager that you want. It's available on pretty much all of them. And then once you have that, it's basically just a one liner to uh, funny enough, like curl down the script here, you know, put it into a specific directory on your system path, maybe use a local bin. In my case, I actually have it uh, in my local uh, bin folder. So, you know, it's not in user local bin on the system, it's, you know, in my actual local user account here. So if you have that on your system path here, like if I do echo path, you'll see that uh, home nick local bin is somewhere in here. I'm not gonna try to eyeball this one, but trust me, it's here somewhere. Uh, yeah, there it is, this one right there, cool. Yeah, I don't know why there's a double forward slash there. Maybe I'll look into that one. But yeah, that's uh, it for installing it. And then, uh, in this case, right now, it's version 0 0.10 as the latest release. Like, I literally just uh, published this a couple of hours ago before recording this video. But if you just want to go to the man main branch instead, like the bleeding edge, you can always replace this 010 with main and uh, get it from there. And you can confirm that it's working just by running LCUR, L curl, right? And then, uh, you know, there's a very uh, short fact here, basically. You know, when would you use a script? Like, maybe just to you know, go over what we went over before, right? Like if you're doing some type of rolling update and you want to make sure that you have zero down, zero downtime deploys, uh, you wouldn't want to use this for benchmarking. There's a link to that work tool that we talked about before if you want to just uh, check that out. It's a really good tool. And then uh, yeah, you might be wondering, well, I don't know if you're really going to be <laughs> wondering this one, but for me, it's like, I almost named this program curl with like the double L at the end, but then I realized that's actually going to be an issue when it comes to tab completing curl because, you know, let's be real now, if you're going to be typing out something like C-U-R and you hit tab, like you're probably going to be running curl, like you don't want to run this script. So that's why I just made it L curl instead because, uh, yeah, it just feels like I don't want to interfere with tab completing curl. And then, yeah, about the other stuff, if, if you just want to learn more about like what I do, but that is it for this script, and I think that is going to be it for this video. Uh, if you have any suggestions on how to make the script better, feel free to open an issue or set up a PR. Or if you are going to set up a PR, I would at least open an issue first just so we can talk about what potentially might be added if you're interested in that one. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help. On that note, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.